Love Them Knives channel here. Jan Xanadu, or as I like to call them, the YX Knives. This is the 636. They have a 650. They have a 750. Those are titanium. The 750 is titanium with uh, VG10. The 650 is titanium with D2. These are some G10 knives, and I've never known them to do these, and so here they come, right? So I noticed these on, uh, well, somebody sent me a, a Instagram message or something and said, hey, have you checked these out? It might have been, actually, it might have been David Kim, and I think it was he emailed me. So I did take a look, and I thought, well, yeah, that'd be cool. So I got this one. And I got I got the 636 and I got the 622. 622, this is just a, a friction folder, okay? But they're both in 14C28N. We'll talk separately about this one. Right now, we're going to talk about this one. It's small, it's lightweight, it's supposed to be 97 grams. And it's a flipper. Where's the flipper tab? There it is. So this is scientific proof that you don't need a flipper tab like you get <laughs> on the uh, Sharp by Design, Nadeau, Evo Typhoon, like I had. It was just like, what the hell? Because it was world-class design, and then here's this thing. It's like, oh my God, I'm not sure I can get my finger up that high. These, I mean, this is... There you go, folks. Did you see that? I know it's. Let me do this again because this might be tough to understand. Yes, you don't need a flipper uh, tab the size of Mount Rushmore. Bang. So I really like this. I, I, I like the way Elijah Isham kind of hides his too. He cans them forward. They're pretty thin or they're kind of really up like this. That kind of thing too. I've seen this done before as well. Kind of real stealth, kind of like the Riot Future was as well, but nice. It kicks right open regardless, and your contact patch, look at that. Not like this, like most flipper knives. Okay, it's right down here. That's nice. So really, what's the action like? It's pretty nice. I mean, this thing is $33, free shipping. So, and it's 14C28, and if you hadn't noticed... Sandvik steel. Now I don't know, haven't had it PMI. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna have it uh, rock weld and see how that goes. And there you go. And it's centered, no blade play, no lock rock. I'm gonna disassemble this. It's G10 inside G10. It's contoured G10. It's got a backspacer. It's got a pocket clip. No, you can't go left hand, right hand only. Okay, you got access here. A number eight. And you know what? I don't know. Is this a number six? I'm going to check. Yeah, that's a number six. Okay. Like I said, we're going to take it apart. Liner lock. There's your lock up. And it's 25% at best. Not the thickest liner material in the world. But this is a lightweight knife. It's not made for a lot of heavy. Please don't beat your folding knives through a 4x4. Four four. Uh, you know, that's just ridiculous. That's kind of stuff I... I, I don't mind uh, testers that are doing that just to see what it'll take before it breaks. But, uh, you know, folding knives are not fixed blade knives and they're definitely not hatchets or chisels. 3.43 um, ounces, 97 grams. They weren't lying. So that's not bad. Now, how big is this dog? Well, let's get the pair of three out. Okay. Okay. Well, it's bigger than the paramilitary three. Um, let's get some, I'll get my shaman out. That might give you a little bit better. And shaman looks bigger. Definitely looks bigger. Um, put a tape to it. They said 90 millimeters, so that would be three and a half inches. Well, I'm getting all that, right? Really looks like... 3.65 inches at 93 or 92 millimeters and then 8 inches overall. 
which is not quite 20 and a half centimeters. So eight inches overall, but really a 3.65 inch blade. That's, that's a lot of blade for that, isn't it? Let's see how that rolls. And okay, we're using it. We're using it all. And nice satin grind. So first they stonewashed the damn thing, which means they took off all the edginess and everything, and then they ground it. So that's a good thing. And is it uh, sharp? And where we got a little piece of paper rolled around here. Okay. Yeah. So on this knife, when I got this, right at the very tip, um, it was turned over a little bit. It kind of hooked over to one side. And so it was catching my thumb when I go like that. Uh, so I go, wow, that, that sucks. So I took my 140 grit off of my KME and just, you know, took it off there. And then, of course, took my strop and then just uh, kind of, I went over the knife a little bit like this. So, yes, it's really sharp because, um, and sometimes I'll do this, especially when you get a good user steel, you know, you can, you can really bring it back without having to put it on your sharpener. And I just try and keep a constant angle on my strop, you know, kind of about there. I mean, you figure out where your edge is, right? And so you're just trying to hit that and you just keep. So we're going to do, we're actually going to do some strops. I haven't put any compound on the back. I kind of screwed it up already, put green on it. But uh, so, yes, I've only been doing green only, but I won't hardly use my KME as long as I just uh, only uh, wait not too long for it to get somewhat dull and then I can just strop it and really bam I mean then it's super sharp so one thing about user steels like 14c 28n and stuff they're not a super steel so it's really easy to bring them back sharp. And I really like that. I'm not an edge retention junkie necessarily. I appreciate that segment. I appreciate those kinds of steels. I've got a K390 para two. Uh, and I've got M390 knives and all that. But, you know, sure nice to have one where you just pull your strop out. And then boom. I mean, you're your razor sharp again. So nothing wrong with that. I, I like that. So they've got a lot of blade on here for no more than the size is. And it's pretty lightweight. Where does it balance? Eh, right here. So these YX knives are kind of interesting. I mean, they're so inexpensive. And if you got D2 burnout, I can see this as a real alternative. Okay, I can see this as a real alternative. Ganzo's now gone to, you know, D2 with all their FH series. And everybody else has jumped on the D2 bandwagon, except for like Real Steel, Rake, some of those others you can get 14C28 in, which is nice. And now you can with these two. And uh, they're just slightly more expensive than a Ganzo knife. Now, it's also got this thumb stud just on this one side. Um, you've got more of a cutaway here than you do on the back side. I should have noticed that before. Um, jimping here on your liner. So it's easy to disengage. And really, it's not bad little action on here. And you've got machining on a pivot. That looks kind of nice. Just regular button head, you know, screws. But I kind of like the G10 inset. And uh, like I was saying, I got mine from 9TI EDC store. Uh, he's working a lot with CH knives with Chen 
and he's got Max Ace and he's got a bunch of other knives as well that he pimps on his Instagram. I'll give you his Instagram link, but check this guy out. These are the different colors that you can get with this knife. And they make one like this in titanium, which is really handsome too and not very expensive as well. So check his site out. I'll give you the link to his store. So here's the uh, detent. Okay. I'd say it's less than a five. It's around a, a four and a half because you can, you can kick this out pretty easy. Just like that. But you know what? I, I like that. If it was much stronger, I think you'd have some difficulty with the thumb stud because it's so close to that scale. It's not real easy to actuate. Uh, and it would really be a bear cat if this detent was a lot stronger. So I think it's appropriate. Let me see if I can fail it. Ooh, that was close, but no, no cigar. Okay, I failed it technically, yes. So it's appropriate, really, because it's smooth to deploy. And I have not taken this apart. I haven't done anything except take it out of the box and play with the damn thing or sharpen it or whatever. So, but it was sharp out of the box. I'll take one. How about the other one? How about the 22, the 622? Okay, and I haven't touched this one. Okay, so they're sharp out of the box. <laughs> wow. And really, this is kind of a kick, isn't it? This little friction folder. I'm not in love with the pocket clip, but I'll do a, a separate video on that. Like the natural G10, you could dye that any color you want. They come in multiple colors, super light, small. Actually, take the pocket clip off. Forget about it. Forget about it. Okay, so yes. But this one, this gives you all the blade, you know, 3.6, 3.65 inch blade, but just barely eight inches and fairly lightweight. So I like it. Different colors in that insert. And the ergos are good. I mean, it feels good. And you got jimping on top of the blade here. Really fit and finish feels good. I don't have any edginess. It's not all that rounded on the inside here. Okay. So, yeah, it's a little bit, but uh, it's 35 bucks. What can I say? Nice. Gives you a little bit break if you want to get away from D2. And the design looks great for piercing slicing. And like I said, that flipper tab is so muted. I really like that. I think that's slick and it really helps that design flow, doesn't it? And here it flows right into the bolster. Ah, yeah. Pretty cool. So let's take it apart. Okay, we got number sixes. We got number eight. And you know what? No point in taking this matrix apart because we can't get in from this side anyhow. So let's just do it this way. And let's see if we can undo it. So it's the cheap knives that got the D-shaped pivot that make it such a... So, you know, don't you? I mean, like $300 knife and shit. You got a round pivot and you're having hell with it and it's turning. And, and then you get some little beat-ass shooter and it's a joy. And I think it's just hysterical. It makes me laugh. It really does make me laugh. I'll tell you what, I get as much fun out of these little shooters, cheap, inexpensive knives, as anything else because they're easy as hell to sharpen. Ah, so we put a little metal insert in here to reinforce that pivot. Okay, that's interesting. Just this little dog right here, see that? This looks wider than this side down here, but I imagine it's only going to fit one way in here. Yeah, the fatter part, the thinner rounded part, so it's only going to fit one way. So you don't have to worry about screwing that up. Ceramic bearings. Oh, no, it's not ceramic bearings. It'll be the end of my world. Uh, internal blade stop. I'm just messing with you. Yeah. Who gives a rat's ass, right? Except ceramic bearings won't rust and metal bearings can. So um, this is nice. Looks good. Clean. 
not bad at all. And what do we got here? Here's our liner side with our backspacer, which we can take off, blah, blah, blah. Pocket clip comes through the back like that, so it holds the liner in place. And there's your uh, D-shaped pivot. Okay, let's throw it back together. Who gives a shit? Oh, hold on. Let's just touch it with some lube ever so lightly. Nano. Nano. Am I getting on the on there? Drop, one drop. Okay. Okay. And this does look like a ceramic detent ball, though. And, nope, no flat spot there. Maybe it's on this side. Nope, it was just going through there, holds it in place. Okay. So, when I put this on, okay, so big berth of sides got to be like that after we put the bearings in. So big flat side here, that goes up. And uh, that goes up. <laughs> right side would be nice. And then the little, you can see as you lay it down, near the bottom is the smaller rounded section. So just like that. Um, so you got reinforcement in there. You like the double G grade knife, don't you? Ganzo grade. Here you go. Goes apart, comes together. No problems. No worries. It's, uh, I love it. I love it. And through here. Now, where are we? Oh, we're centered. Okay. Any blade play? Nope. Mm. How's the action? Good. Nice. Okay. It's all good in the neighborhood. We got the uh, little 636. All back together again, sharp, easy to sharpen, easy to take apart, put back together, contoured, G10. I'll let you go. Thank you very much for hanging out. QSP, give them a shot. I mean, I'll tell you what, thing, you got nothing to lose. Uh, you got 35 bucks, that's about it. This is even less. This one's twenty nine dollars. Comes in, comes in a bunch of different colors as well. So, uh, hey, the YX, the Yon Xanadu line, the seven fifty is really cool. Six fifty is a great knife. Heard a lot of good things about that. And so, on and on we go. Let's see where we go from there. Take care. We do love them knives. You guys stay sharp.